Hi, my name is Brendan Winder. I'm with Sarah. I'm talking today with Brian Parker from Cansoon about security and safety in the residential red zone. Thanks Brendan. Um, obviously the residents have quite a few questions about their properties specifically with security. Actually a few of them would like to go back and pick up their plants after they've actually settled. Is it okay for people to return to their properties after settlement? No Brian, they can't. Upon settlement, uh, everything there, including the property inside, becomes the property of the Crown. It'll very quickly become a work site. It'll be noisy, uh, dusty, and have a fence around it with the contractors um, inside going about their business. So anything that's left there upon settlement will become the property of the Crown. Brendan, some residents are waking up to actually lots of noises and finding actually some of the clearances have, have started and they haven't known anything about them. Uh, are, are, is Sarah actually informing people that these clearances are taking place? Yes, they will. The Sarah clearances um, will make sure that the neighbours that are still in the neighbourhood uh, will be informed. We'll knock on their door, uh, we'll invite them to community meetings and also get a booklet to them. So there's plenty of opportunities there for them to know when it's going to take place. The insurers may have a slightly different regime uh, in each of those companies will deal with it in their own manner but we're encouraging them to do as much communication as we can. So there are also um, quite big security issues, I mean A in terms of the, the types of machinery that are going to be around and B in terms of people actually leaving and buildings coming down and um, residence areas actually sort of becoming less populated. What sort of measures is Sarah putting in place? So Brian, we're working closely with the communities. We spend a lot of time with the other agencies that are stakeholders out there. The police, fire, neighbourhood watch and the community groups and uh, also spend some time talking to the contractors about what they see. Uh, they are our eyes and ears on the ground and they're often in touch with us about uh, any suspicious activity. So we're really comfortable that the uh, process we have in place allows us to understand what's happening in the, in the neighbourhoods and we can uh, react to that pretty quickly if we need to. We've also spoken to the contractors about um, fence lines and sight lines so that the neighbours neighbors that uh, remain can see what's going on around them. And uh, we're talking pretty closely with uh, community groups to ensure that we've got the right amount of patrolling and uh, people going through the neighbourhoods uh, daily and nightly. So they've got a really good coverage of the activities that are going on, uh, good and bad, in those neighbourhoods. Okay, but what about when the properties themselves are being cleared? Will there be fences? Yes, there will be fences. One of the requirements we have of our contract is that they fence the entire property. So that'll be the wire fences you've seen a lot of around uh, Canterbury recently, the uh, sort of six foot high wire mesh fences. They'll be buttoned up at the end of each night, so people should be assured that those sites are nice and safe um, after hours. And uh, during the working day, the contractors will be on site, and you should feel comfortable that um, the sites will be safe then also. With families, however, I mean, a lot of children will be very interested with these big Tonka toys coming down the road. Uh, so there'll be a lot of curiosity. So any messages for parents and families? Yeah, we have. Kids won't understand the hazards quite like the parents will. And we'd really encourage the parents to talk to the kids that these work sites aren't play areas and uh, these big machines aren't Tonka toys. And those fences are there for a reason. So if we can keep the kids away from um, those areas, we'd really appreciate it. Obviously, a lot of residents who are still in these areas are worried about criminals coming in and doing their deeds. One thing that is a uh, concern are the high fences, uh, which can be used to hide behind or to store goods. Uh, are anything being done about those things? Yes, there will be stuff done. Uh, we're going to look at uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on who owns the fences. In some circumstances, they're shared between uh, two different parties, and that can become a little complicated. So we'll look at um, what the threats are out there, um, what the fences are like, who owns them, and um, where the benefit is in case, on a case-by-case -case basis, we'll look at uh, taking some of those fences down to help improve security around those properties. So will the contractors who are carrying out the clearances and doing the salvage, will they be carrying ID? They should be in uh, sight vehicles and uh, acting in a professional manner with full uh, high visibility vests on and hard hats and boots. And if you see people out there that aren't operating like that or don't have the correct gear on, they may well be suspicious. So we'd like to hear from you. So what number should they call, Brendan? The Sarah 0800 number, which is 0800 ring Sarah, or 0800 7464 2372. Things are pretty dry at the moment, Brendan. What about the fire risk? We're working hard with the fire service to identify and manage the fire risks. Some of our teams out on the ground will come back to us each day and let us know if there are any areas that we particularly need to address. And we're also addressing the, uh, the vegetation out there in the residential red zone and making sure it's knocked back 
so we're not going to have that uh, fire risk uh, getting worse each day. A number of the residents, Brendan, call us on a weekly basis telling us that they're not feeling very safe at home because people have left. Uh, is there anything that you can sort of tell them that makes them feel more at ease? Yeah, there's a number of things and Sarah takes it very seriously. The, uh, the reassurance and the security and the safety of the people still in the residential red zone is a very high priority for us. So we're really going to encourage people to uh, network and communicate and talk and, and share ideas. We want the uh, community to really be guardians of their own neighbourhoods and work together to help us to keep them safe and secure and happy to be there while we go through this process. Is there anything specific that communities could be doing to make the communities feel a little safer for themselves? Sure, there's some, there's some small things they can do and uh, they may well have a big impact. So clearing out um, circulars from litter boxes and making properties look lived in uh, can certainly discourage people from uh, being in those neighbourhoods, that, uh, particularly the people that shouldn't be there. One of the difficult things for community members to do is actually act on suspicious behaviour. Do you have any comments about that? Sure, our advice is consistent all the way through. Call 111. The police are there to determine if their behaviour is legal or not. If you think it looks suspicious or it doesn't seem right, call the police. They'll head round and talk to these people. If they're there legitimately, no problem. If they're not, we'll stop someone from doing something bad. And we're all in this together, so we really encourage you to ring 111, let the police go around there and find out for us.